Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is such a fantastic game, and there are so many fun and memorable moments that leave me always wanting more. Previously, I did make a video listing 50 things that'll make you rage in Smash, so today we're going to be looking at the other side of the coin and flipping it around. We're going to be looking at the top 20 things that always feel great in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. These are the things that just never get old to me, and they're some of the main reasons why I keep playing this game so, so much. This is obviously my own personal list, so I would really love to hear what you guys think. Let me know what your favorite things about playing Smash is in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see some more. Alright, so now I've set the scene, let's get into it. What do Falcon's Knee, Ganondorf's Stomp, and Dark Pit Side B all have in common? If you said they all kill people way too early, then yeah, you would probably be right, but they also all have that electricity effect on hit. I just have such a soft spot for the electric moves. The way it makes that sound, it pauses for a second, and then it just sends your opponent absolutely flying is so satisfying. I know there are loads of less exciting electric moves in the game, but these ones are just so satisfying that I had to put them on the list. At number 19, we have killing a disrespectful opponent. A lot of people in Smash are gonna teabag or taunt, and while I think that is totally fine, it just feels so good to destroy someone who's got cocky just a little bit too early. Now, I'm a big fan of a cheeky taunt myself, but it really does open you up to look pretty silly if things get turned on you. And when my opponent disrespects you, you better believe I'm gonna go full tryhard mode against them. Now, playing online is okay. But playing a session of friendly matches with someone in person just feels so goddamn good. I play a lot of online for my content, so playing offline just feels like a bit of a treat for me. Combos feel so clean, you're just like moving all around the place with awesome movement, and I find that when I'm sitting next to whoever I'm playing, it just gives you a bit of a fun vibe, and you can go for crazy stuff without risking losing your GSP. I know not everyone is lucky enough to live with Smash players like me, but if you can, I would really highly recommend find a friendlies partner and get into it. <laughs> Look, I might be a bad person for this one, but to me, it feels pretty good when you cheese someone, especially when you're really far behind and it looks like you couldn't possibly win. For anyone who doesn't know what cheesing is, it comes from when something is a bit undeserved. I'm talking about low percentage gimps, a Game & Watch 9, a hero crit, just anything that's stupid and a bit unfair. Look, it's not the most honourable way to take a win, but there is a reason that saying, we take those, is one of the most overused lines in Smash commentary. Just whatever you do. Don't do what my friend Poppet did and eat cheese every time there's cheese in Smash. I think he may have made himself lactose intolerant from doing that one. Now at number 16, I got a nice simple one, but I feel like getting Elite Smash is half the reason that anyone even plays online at this point. It's like the game has recognised that you're not too bad with that character. Sometimes I get some pretty undeserved characters into Elite Smash. Um, I'm looking at you, me, Swordfighter. But it is extra satisfying if you've been grinding for a long time with one of your mains, especially if you brought them up all the way from low GSP. Staying on the topic of online, we have number 15, and that is beating someone with a terrible rule set. There's a 50% chance that you get your opponent's preferred rules when you play online, and you can turn on some pretty dumb shit. Almost all players have some variation of what I would consider the standard, 3 stock, 7 minutes on one of the restricted stages. But why is 1 stock and stamina mode and random stages an option? So occasionally you're gonna run into these. Getting a zero to death in a one stock match, or locking your opponent against a wall of an illegal stage, or destroying someone with their final smash meter, it just feels so good. A jab lock is when you hit your opponent with a weak move when they're on the floor after missing a tech, and it locks them in place for a small amount of time. Jab locks are not only super satisfying because they open up a lot of interesting punish options when you're done, but it also requires you to quickly react to what your opponent is doing. Feels good to meter hit every single time. Getting hit by one, eh, not so much. Now this is a subtle one, but next up, we have calling out your opponent's retreating option. We've all been there, playing against someone who has absolutely no intention of fighting you like a man, and they just want to run away and play campy or defensive. It can be really frustrating, but that frustration makes it feel so much better when you finally catch them running away. Whether they're trying to roll through you, jump out of the corner, or dash backwards, when you finally get your mitts on that little bus, it feels so rewarding, 
and it makes playing against an online Samus eh, almost bearable. Next up, I've got something that I know not everyone watching has experienced, and that is doing something cool on stream at a tournament. Now, obviously, most matches can't get streamed at a tournament, so you'll be lucky to get even just one game on the stream unless you're making it into the very late and final rounds, which, which I never did. So I always saw being on stream as my big opportunity to get a clip that I can watch later. I can submit it to Yeet Smash or something. I didn't often do anything very good, but if I ever did, you better believe I would be looking at the VOD as soon as I got home and saving that clip. At number 11, we've got hitting a reflected projectile kill. Now look, I'm noticing a little bit of a trend here. It seems that I really like getting my revenge against projectile characters, but hear me out here. If you just spam using your reflector, assuming your character has one, your opponent's probably going to stop spamming and use their projectiles at more unexpected times. So saving your reflector for that critical moment when your opponent thinks they have you pinned down feels amazing, and especially if it's the final kill of a match. Now, number 10 is a bit of a weird one here. We have getting some respect from your opponent. This is a rare one, but there are actually some absolute kings and queens out there who are going to try their hardest when you play against them, but if they lose, instead of being salty, they just swallow their pride and maybe even compliment something you did. It's great to see both players smiling at the end of a match, so massive respect to everyone out there who is actually gracious in their defeat. Extra massive shout out to people who are still good sports, even when they're playing against campy characters or they get cheesed and die really early. If you can keep a smile on your face, you know, shout outs to you. Next up, we have getting a reversal on someone. Now, when you're getting juggled around, edge guarded, and in general, getting kind of wrecked, a lot of the time your opponent will be in a false sense of security. If you can stay calm and wait for that perfect moment, a lot of the time you can turn the tables completely when your opponent overextends. Getting a reversal like this can completely change the flow of a battle, and it feels so rewarding that you've stayed calm and looked for your way out instead of just panicking like most players would. Now this might be the rarest one on the list, but at number 8 I've got getting good rematches online. You know most online matches are a bit of a one and done kind of thing, but very occasionally you will match into someone who has a good connection, a fun playstyle, and you'll actually want to rematch each other a bunch of times. I've played against the same person for over an hour a few times and actually enjoyed the matches. A rare occurrence for online indeed, right? Let's stop this no rematch culture when you play against someone cool. Stick around if you can. Next up at number 7, we have winning a hard matchup. I know you can't see me right now, but I'm doing inverted commas over hard matchup because, you know, I'm going to have to explain one of my pet peeves here. Something just really grinds my gears. People talk about matchups and tier lists like they matter so much. Matchups and tier lists do matter, but in my opinion, it only really makes a big impact when you play at the very highest level. And when you're playing online, well, that's a whole other story. If I'm playing Ganondorf against a Pikachu online, I have a great chance of winning, and it feels really good to come out on top against what everyone might expect. At the average player's skill level, you can always win any matchup just by outplaying your opponent and it is really rewarding to have that experience. If you're getting kind of serious about the character you're playing in Smash, you might take some time to look up some combos on YouTube and maybe go into training mode and learn them. But this means nothing if you never actually use it. So number six is hitting a training mode combo in an actual game. It's so much harder against an opponent who might not be at the perfect percent you've practiced at and they should be mixing up their DI to make it a bit harder for you. So if you do end up hitting it, it's a really satisfying experience. Now some characters have projectiles built into their moveset that can be picked up by either player. This is like Rob's Gyro, King K. Rule's Crown, Diddy's Banana, Link's Bomb, just to name a few. Picking up their weapons and using it against them not only feels great because you deny them the ability to use it themselves, but it also gives you the opportunity to do some really, really crazy stuff. Every character has these crazy combos from Banana, awesome edge guards with the crown, and potentially insane combos with the gyro. And hitting any of these against the person who would be spamming it feels so good. You get the opportunity so rarely, so it just never gets old to me. At number 4, I've got finally finding a character that you just really like. So many players have a lot of trouble finding a main in this game. Some might say there's an overwhelming number of options with like 80 characters in the game. But when you get over that initial weirdness and finally gel with a certain character and it becomes your main, it feels so good. 
It's kind of like when you meet a new person, and then once you realize you guys just get along, you can just be yourself around them. It feels great. Look, it's, it's no secret that spiking someone feels good. A spike is where you send your opponent down, and if you hit them when they're off the stage, it usually kills people at very, very low percent. Sounds overpowered, but the game is actually really smart in handling this. Most spikes are pretty slow to come out, which means that you usually need to get a read of some kind in order to hit a spike. So when you do, and your opponent dies off the bottom, it feels so good. You call to the option, and you just stomp them into oblivion. It also helps that a lot of spikes just look so strong and so satisfying. Lately, people have been throwing around the term disrespect a lot in Smash. In my opinion, the purest form of disrespect though, is when your opponent is already not recovering, and then you go down and you hit them anyway. It's kind of pointless, and it's also really risky, and there's actually no reason to do it aside from styling and sending a message. But spiking someone when you're both off the screen, and it does that weird looking zoom in thing, it just hits different, and it never gets old to me. And finally, my number one thing that feels good when you're playing Smash is finishing off an awesome combo with a hard ass re. Now low percent combos won't usually end up straight up killing your opponent. So when you toss them around for a bit, they're gonna have an opportunity to escape after a certain amount of time. If you manage to call out what their escape option is though, stuff like this happens. Catching a jump or an air dodge or anything, it just feels so good. It wraps up the combo so nicely with a little bow, and this is the stuff that you save the replay for. This is the stuff you clip and put in your montage, and I don't think it's ever going to stop feeling good. So there you have it guys. That was the 20 things that feel great in Smash. I'd love to hear what you guys think again, so let me know what you thought of this in the comments. What is your favourite thing in Smash? Was it on the list? Was it not? Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please subscribe, and I will see you guys all next time.